If you're looking to go fully electric, but you needed something that can carry up to seven people, your choices in the past were limited to just a handful of models that cost well over $100,000. Well, thankfully for 2024, Kia is looking to change all that with the introduction of this new model here. This is the first ever Kia EV9. It's built on the same architecture that also underpins the excellent EV6. However, unlike its smaller brother, this vehicle here is Telluride size, which means it can carry up to seven people on board. It offers up to 304 miles of range. And if you guys go for the GT line version, Version, it can also sprint to 60 in around five seconds. So today we're actually out here in Napa, California, Northern California to finally drive the all new EV9. And the big question I wanna answer for those of you who've been wanting to go fully electric, but you also needed to carry up to seven people, how does the brand new 2024 Kia EV9 stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So the million dollar question with a lot of EV vehicles is does this vehicle have a frunk? And because it's built on the same eGMP architecture as the EV6, I'm happy to report that it actually does have a frunk, albeit a somewhat small one, although, although it is bigger than the EV6. Now Kia says there's around 1.8 cubic feet of total sport storage space under here. And you can see there's also a light. It's definitely a little bit of a smaller area versus some of the more premium luxury competitors. The company actually says if you, get for, if you go for the single motor version, you'll actually have a larger frunk because it doesn't have that front motor. But since we're underneath here, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain specs. Now, this model that we're showing you is the top of the line version. It's a GT line, which means it comes standard with dual electric motors, one in the front, one in the rear. It has a 99.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. So this only comes with the bigger battery pack. The single motor uh, light version is gonna have a 76 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that's the smaller version. This model here, however, delivers 379 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Now, that torque figure is more in the GT line because it has extra torque courtesy of a boost function. Uh, you can get that boost function on the uh, land and the wind trim as part of a boost upgrade that Kia will send you in a software upgrade. We don't know the pricing of that yet, but the base configuration is 443 pound-feet of torque. The single motor version offers either 201 horsepower or 215, depending on if you go for the long range or the short range light version. It all goes out through a one-speed direction gear transmission. Kia says this model here will accelerate to 60 in around five seconds, uh, which is actually pretty quick considering how heavy the vehicle is. Uh, top speed of this car is around 124 miles an hour. It's an SUV and it can surprise tow up to 5,000 pounds if you guys go for this high trim version. I think the lower trims are between 2,000 to 3,500 pounds. Uh, as this car sits, it weighs in at just over 5,800 pounds. So this thing is about 1,000 pounds heavier versus the EV6 on which it's built. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling of this vehicle because as you can see, if you guys really like the styling of a Telluride, you're really gonna like the overall look of this car because it kind of has like styling cues that remind me of like a Telluride meets EV6. You can see the front end has Kia latest front fascia. They call it a digital tiger face. You can see it technically doesn't have a grill because it's an electric vehicle. You have the big Kia logo. This color is also called Deep Ocean Gloss. It's an extra 700 bucks. You can also get it in a matte finish for $1,000 extra, which the matte finish, I think, actually will give this car even more aggressive lines. Uh, you can see the headlights on this car. This is the GT line, so you have an upgraded headlight where it has kind of the upgraded LEDs with the LED daytime running light and turn signal. There's also this kind of digital light signature here. It's only on the up-level land and GT line trims. You can actually change the way that looks. Kia says there are five different options you can choose from uh, that give it a different light signature as you approach the vehicle. You can see the front end of the GT line also is a little bit more aggressive. You have this gloss black. You have these active grille shutters. Compared to the land trim, this to me definitely looks a little bit more sporty. It definitely looks a little bit more aggressive and it really kind of gives you the uh, essence that you're looking at a more premium vehicle like a Range Rover or a Cadillac Escalade, for example. Moving around the side profile, this is where the size of the EV9 really comes into play here because this is about the same size as a lot of three-row, mid-size, gas-powered crossovers. At 197.4 inches long, it's about an inch longer versus the Telluride. Its wheelbase is 122 inches long. That's almost eight inches longer than the Telluride, so you're really kind of pushing the wheels out to the corners you're gonna get more interior space. This vehicle's around 79 inches wide, so it's a fairly big vehicle. Now, the wheels, the wheels are definitely interesting. Uh, they're part of the whole controversy with the design because you can take your pick between either a 19 or going up to a 21 inch wheel. These are the 21 inch wheels that come standard on the GT line and they have kind of like a squared off look to them. I actually really like them compared to the triangle look that you get on the land trim. You can see it's a 21 inch wheel wrapped in a 285 by 45 with tires. So really fat tires. Kia says they're low rolling resistance, but I have to say they probably 
probably could have gotten more range out if they went with a smaller wheel. This car also has these body colored black painted wheel arches, which definitely uh, accentuate the kind of squareness of this vehicle. The car actually has around just under eight inches of ground clearance. It has a fixed suspension. There's no air suspension. Kia does say that if you get the towing package, it'll have a self leveling rear suspension. Now the GT line you can see has power folding mirrors, which are black painted. Uh, also has cameras, of course, with integrated turn signals. The, the um, door handles, you can see they auto retract to open and close whenever you have the vehicle locked or unlocked. The GT line also includes a lot of black trim along the window trim. It has this really nice roof rail. It has a dual panoramic sunroof design as well. And then this right here, you can see, this reminds me a lot of the EV6, especially how it kind of goes up uh, toward the D pillar there. It's an interesting styling cue, but again, I think it looks really good on the overall lines of this car. Now the charge port door, you're gonna find that right here. You can see it still uses the J1772 plug with the CCS combo. Uh, Kia says this vehicle is the only three row electric SUV that runs on the 800 volt architecture, which means on a level three, this will accept up to 210 kilowatts. The smaller battery will accept up to 235. Kia basically says you can go from 10 to 80% in about 24 minutes. And it also has an onboard charger uh, that puts out around 10.9 kilowatts. So that'll take you about eight hours on a level two if you guys have a 48 amp system at your home. Now looking at the rear, you can see the design also kind of looks similar to uh, the opposites United styling theme that we saw on the front fascia. I really like the way the taillights look with the kind of stacked design. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a Volvo, which I think looks good. It's a full LED taillight design. I also like the more aggressive rear spoiler that you get on the GT line. There's also a rear window wiper that's cleverly hidden uh, underneath that rear spoiler. It's got the usual badging. The rear diffuser is also a little bit more aggressive. I really like the new Kia badge. It just looks really good with the deep ocean gloss exterior color. Uh, you can also get it, like I said earlier, in a matte finish. Now, in terms of the cargo area, this is a big square SUV, and this is where the EV9 really shines here, because as you can see, um, Tommy, who's actually behind the camera, he's got, he and I have all of our stuff back here for filming, and this is around 20.4 cubic feet of total storage space. So it's about the same size as what you're gonna get in a Talu ride, uh, which is definitely a great thing. You can see you can also fold this third row seat down, which as you can see, it's also manual folding. I was kind of hoping it'd be power, but it expands it to around 43 and a half cubic feet. If you fold down the second row, Kia says you get a maximum of 82 cubic feet. That's a little bit less, around five cubic feet less versus the Telluride, but this is one of the most practical three row uh, electric SUVs that you're gonna find, especially for this price. So now let's move on to the interior of this 2024 Kia EV9. Before we get inside, I wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see this is a variation of the key that they used on the Stinger a few years ago. It has its buttons on the side for lock, unlock, power lift gate, and panic function. On this side, you can see there's remote start and you can also activate the, the smart park feature and open up the hood. This car also comes with their digital key 2.0 where you can also use your smartphone as a key. I don't have access to that because this is a uh, very brief media drive. Now, as I approach the car, you can see the car sensed that it automatically deployed the door handles and retracted or un un unfolded the mirrors. Now, when you open up the door, you can see the interior of my test car looks really good with the deep ocean blue gloss exterior. This is the gray Syntex. You can see it's a synthetic leather. It has the two-tone look. I love the fact that this area here is the light gray. The black is over here on the inner portion. These seats are heated and ventilated on both the front seats. The heat and ventilation function comes standard on every trim level of the EV9. These seats adjust in 10 different ways on the driver's side, eight different ways on the passenger side, uh, which is nice. And then you also have your controls over here. The door panel material you can see is a soft touch injection molded plastic. There are some recycled materials here, uh, padded Syntex leather over here. You can see you have your heated steering wheel. The massage function is kind of similar to what Genesis puts with the Ergo Motion seat. It's only on the driver's side. It offers five different levels of massage. You have two person memory, heated and cooled seats, like I said. Uh, you have a 14 speaker Meridian sound system, hard touch plastic material down here. But overall, it makes a great first impression. Uh, I, if you guys also don't like this color, Kia also offers a black or a brown or a navy blue interior, which is kind of unique to the GT line. The GT line also has a more aggressive looking seat with the uh, badging there uh, on the actual seat back itself. Now getting inside, you can see uh, this has a really easy step in height because it has nearly eight inches of ground clearance as I shut the door. The door has a solid sounding thunk. Ignore that rattle. There's actually stuff in the door here. So let me go ahead and take that out and shut that again. Again, it has a really nice solid sounding thunk, uh, which adds to that impression of quality. Now, as I look inside the interior, you can see it looks uh, pretty similar to a lot of other modern Kias. When you wanna start the vehicle up, uh, the button to turn everything on is actually hidden here on the control stock for the shifter. So it actually shows EV there with a, like a power button. Typically you find it here or find it here. So that will take a little bit of getting used to if you've never been in this car, but put your foot on the brake, you can see turn the vehicle on and it just uh, comes to life. There's no, obviously there's no engine. It just says ready in the instrument panel and it kind of lets you know 
this vehicle is ready to be driven. Uh, and again, the tech on this car is really impressive. Now this car has Kia's latest connected services, or they call it connected cloud navigation uh, services, or CCNC, I believe is what they, it's short for. This has basically uh, their newest software where it includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So this is the first Kia product to get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see my phone is connected now, uh, which is nice. You have a 12.3 inch display here. You have a new five inch climate screen over here in the center, which kind of connects the two screens together. And then you have a 12.3 inch screen here. It makes a great first impression, like I said. Uh, and then in terms of the rest of the materials, you can see the upper dash area has a soft touch material. This portion here, however, is hard touch plastic. There's a heads up display that's a 10 inch diameter heads up display uh, that's basically included when you guys go for the GT line package. And then down here, you can see you have this kind of material that feels like a fabric material. There's some beautiful ambient lighting in the background of this. This kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Rivian. It's very modern, it's very sophisticated. It looks very premium. I also love the haptic controls here where it kind of is nicely integrated into this like plastic panel. Uh, these buttons are invisible when the car is not on, but again, it kind of gives you, you know, buttons here with haptic feedback. If you want to go back to the home system, you can go to navigation, of course. Uh, that's all very nice. Um, so I really like how kind of clean look. The last time I saw something like this, I was in a Nissan Aria. You can see there's a big volume knob here, which is nice. You have te dual tri-zone temperature control, which is standard. Uh, I like how Kia mixes like in hard buttons with haptic buttons and touchscreen control. Your USB charging ports are all down here. I also like how the air vents are traditional instead of those uh, dash vents uh, or vents where you have to adjust it through the screen. Uh, and then in terms of the steering wheel, you can see this is a new steering wheel. It's got a flat bottom and a flat top design. It also has a power tilt and telescoping function. You get that when you go for the two top trims, which is the Land and the GT Line. Uh, the steering wheel itself also has an illuminated Kia logo. So that logo is in, that's illuminated is only on the top trims. Like I said, it has paddles on the wheel. It has your controls to control the screen there, to control your audio functions. And then it's got those paddles for the regen braking. Uh, it's got the same turn signal stock controls that you'll find on a lot of other modern Kias. This, this model here being the GT line also includes their blind view camera. So if you signal left or right, it'll show you in the camera screen exactly what uh, is, at, is in your blind spot, which is a great touch. When I put the vehicle in traverse, you basically twist it back to go to reverse. It gives you a full 360 camera, which is nice. You can also do a full perimeter scan around the vehicle. I do wish that the car on the screen here kind of matched the car that this actually is and the color and the wheels. That looks like it's a base light trim as opposed to this GT line. But again, the graphics and resolution is pretty high quality. If you wanna go into drive, you push it forward to go to drive, push that button here at the end of the stock to go into park. Uh, this is a really interesting shifter. I like how it takes up less space, but it takes a little bit of getting used to, but if you're an owner of this car, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, the center console you can see here uh, has a really nice lid, sturdy lid, where if you open this up, there's your cup holders. You push down on these buttons here. That'll reveal the cup holders or they'll extend the cup holders. And then you have more uh, open storage down here, which is nice for you know putting some loose knickknacks, maybe a purse or whatnot. Uh, your wireless cell phone charging mat is right here. As you can see, my iPhone 14 Pro Max fits pretty nicely. You have buttons over here for your auto hold, hill descent control, and then your 360 camera. Again, you can also turn on and off the parking sensors. This car also comes with a feature where you can lock it in like all wheel drive. Remember this is this has two electric motors. So I imagine it does like an even um, split in terms of the torque. And then if you wanna push that button here, there are four different drive modes. There's a sport, my drive, snow, eco, and normal. And typically when you put it in this mode, it actually would change the way the gauge cluster looks. Although I believe this car has the setting turned off uh, to kind of stay in a certain gauge cluster. So it kind of will customize that if you guys would like. Uh, over here, you can see nice padded center console area. If you open this up, it's not quite the deepest center console, but it's shallow here because there's more storage underneath here for the passengers. You can see there are some buttons here if you want to adjust the seat, uh, the front passenger seat itself, which is nice. Uh, over here, there's a digital camera rear mirror, which is included on the top trims. I really like that feature, especially if you plan to you know, put stuff to the roof or if you have really tall passengers back there. The glove compartment is massive, actually. It's a bin style. It's stamped and it's lined with felt. It actually also has another two, second level of storage in there, uh, which is a nice touch. The 14-speaker Meridian sound system also sounds pretty good. If you guys are an audiophile, I recommend checking that box versus the standard 8-inch system that you get in the lower trims. The seats are also comfortable and supportive. They're a little bit more aggressively bolstered. Uh, they also have like a relax function where there's an ottoman where it power it power out. So technically this seat here is probably a 10 way and this right here is a 12 way because of the additional adjustments. Uh, for a fake leather material, I have to say it's a really nice feeling leather, uh, especially if you guys plan to take a lot of long trips, it feels really high quality and durable. Above me here, there's actually a suede material for the headliner and you also have uh, these controls here for the ambient or the map lighting, which is all LED. And then you can see here, there's also a standard sunroof here. There's also a dual sunroof. This actually opens up as well. 
like in the traditional sense to kind of, kind of vent air if you guys would like that. The back over there, as you can see, which I'll show you later, has just a fixed glass, glass roof panel. But overall, the interior definitely makes a great first impression. I really love the way the new software looks here. It's quick and snappy. It's easy to use. The CarPlay also is finally wireless, which is great. And it just looks fantastic. This screen here for the climate function, however, I have to say, it doesn't quite match the look of the two screens to the left and to the right of it because it's technically not a full digital display. It just has graphics that look a little bit different, but I like how Kia kind of gave us a separate climate screen here instead of bearing it into the actual screen here. If you go back to the home system here, um, if you want to adjust some settings, you can basically do that from over here uh, and it allows you to kind of customize everything to your liking. But overall, the interior, like I said, high quality materials, good visibility, comfortable seats, lots of space, which is what's important. And really, it just kind of reminds me of, you know, a next generation version of the Telluride. So if you guys like the Telluride, you'll really like the interior of the EV9. Now moving into the back seat, this vehicle is a three row uh, family SUV. And this is where Kia, again, spent a lot of time making sure that the EV9 would appeal to families out there, especially if you're coming from a Telluride. You can see my particular test car here has the recliner power adjustable captain's chair. So these seats adjust in eight different ways. They are also heated and ventilated. They also come with that retractable power out ottoman, as you can see. If I push this button here, it'll retract out the ottoman. You can also recline it. So this kind of reminds me a lot of the seats that you'll find in something like the Kia Carnival. So that's a really great feature. These seats, however, are $2,000 extra, and they also do eat into the space of the third row. Now, if you guys want a bench seat, you have to step down to the light trim or the wind trim. If you guys go the, with the, any of the other trims, the light long range, the land, or the GT line, so the upper trims will only come with the captain's chairs, which means they only seat uh, six people as opposed to seven. You can see the door panel material, same materials from the front seats. Uh, the heated and cooled seat control button is here. You have aluminum accented door handles, some gray painted plastic, padded area here, along with more ambient lighting. Uh, and overall, it just shows you a ton of space. In fact, there's around 42 inches of legroom back here, which is basically the same as you get in a Telluride. So that's basically among the best in the segment if you guys are looking for second row uh, comfort in terms of space and whatnot. Now getting back here, you can see um, it's really easy to get back here as I shut the door. The door, also, the door also has a nice solid sounding thunk. You can see some of the ambient lighting. Uh, looks fantastic back here. Again, it all just gives you kind of the impression that you're in like a first class style seating. Now you can see there are storage pockets over here. Uh, and then I mentioned earlier that is very narrow and that's because if I pull this out, there's actually a little bit of like a tray table here. And then you can also push this back and it reveals a pretty deep center console storage area. So you can store some loose items in here. I do wish the storage was a little bit more organized. It's just kind of like a big bin. You just throw things in here, but it's nice that Kia again gives you that, that feature. You have two USB-C charging ports here on each of the seat backs. You have tri-zone climate control where the rear seat gets its own set of climate controls. You have rear seat air vents, you have ambient LED map lighting, and then this door or this like material or this roof here is fixed but you can close and open up that shade which is nice the armrest is also adjustable which is good you have these kind of wing out head restraints that basically allow you to turn this almost into like a pillow and then if you want to move the seat forward and back you can do that via the little control over here which is nice um, but just keep in mind, remember, these seats are two grand extra and they do eat into the third row space. But let's go ahead and hop into that third row because that's probably an area that you guys are really interested to see. Now getting back here, you can basically just push that button and that will electrically fold the seat out of the way. Now the seat does move relatively quick considering it's a power mechanism. That's probably why I would skip this feature and just go with the manual captain's chairs, which will be hydraulically assisted and they'll move forward a lot faster. But getting back here, let me go ahead and show you guys the space. As you can see, it sits two people across, which is a downside from the Telluride, which sits three people across. Not sure why Kia couldn't carry that over for this car, but let's go ahead and get back here and shut the door. Now, once I get back here, you can see, I'll put the seat back, which you can do just by pushing that button over here. You can see the space back here, Kia says there's 29.9 inches of legroom back here. Now, that is about two inches less versus if you guys don't get this seat. If you guys don't get this seat, you'll have 32 inches of legroom, which actually means that the, the EV9 has about an inch more legroom than the Telluride. The Telluride offers 31 inches of legroom in the back. You can see this is with the seat, the second row captain's chair is not all the way back. So when you put it back, it actually sits itself at the halfway space. You can see if I look over here and then look over here, there's a lot more leg room. So it does eat into the leg room, but this, in this position, this is pretty comfortable. I'm five foot seven. I have a decent amount of space for my knees still. Um, 
Uh, there's also a decent amount of foot space, although the rails there, you can see they eat into the foot space a little bit. In terms of the headroom space, this car has a ton of headroom. Kia says there's around one and a half more inches of headroom in this car in the third row versus the Telluride. So taller folks will find this a little bit more comfortable if you have long legs. legs however, let me show you guys what it's like when you're on this side with the seat all the way back. So as I get over here on this side, you can see my knees are jammed up against the seat. So this is not comfortable for me at five foot seven. You're gonna have to ask this passenger to move their seat forward. You can to their space a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. These seats do eat up two inches of legroom because of just how big they are. You have some storage over here, two USB-C charging ports. It's all hard touch plastic here, but at least you have a nice view. Rear seat, third row air vents, which is nice. But overall, if you guys plan to use this as a family vehicle, you certainly can. Just keep in mind, you may not wanna go for the option of these seats if you regularly carry passengers in the third row. So welcome to the interior of the 2024 Kia EV9. And as you guys can see, I am joined by Tommy from TFL. Tommy, thanks for joining us again. The last time we saw each other, we were at the Mustang Drive where I lost my voice. That's right. Yep, but the voice is back. Yes, the voice is back. That was like back in August. So that was a long time ago. Today, we're out here in much cooler conditions because it was really hot, I remember, in Southern California because we're here to drive this electric family crossover. And we're behind the wheel of the GT line, which Kia says will do zero to 60 in five seconds. Tommy, do you think we're going to be able to replicate that number? Well, I hope so. It's got a lot of horsepower. It's got over 500 pound-feet of torque. Mm -hmm. So I say we give it a go. Yeah, so we're at we're at 94% state of charge. It's showing 254 miles. I have it in sport mode now. Um, I guess let's go ahead and see what we can get. You think I should try brake torquing it? Give it a go. Why not? All right, let's see here. I don't think it really Nothing. does anything. <laughs> Oh, oh, it doesn't like it. Oh, it does not like that. It actually put it... <laughs> actually, just kidding. I had it in park. That was my own fault. All right, give it another go. Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, 4.47 seconds, but that's with it going slightly downhill. Yeah. Uh, which I believe Kia says the time was 4.5 with rollout, with a foot of rollout. So, I mean... A sub, a sub five second time for a car that weighs like 6,000 pounds, I have to say, is very impressive. You think I should go left or right here? Go right here. Yeah, let's give it a go. Um, what I would say, Sofian, is that the EV9 is really interesting mm -hmm. because it's, it's a vehicle that can be either surprisingly quick mm -hmm. if you get like this GT line, or surprisingly maybe perhaps hokey <laughs> If you get like you're the so base nice model. with that word, <laughs> yeah. So Kia says that the slowest version of the EV9 will do zero to sixty in eight point eight seconds, which I feel like is probably more like nine seconds, and that's before you start loading up with people and stuff. And that trim has two hundred and one horsepower. Mm -hmm. So look, I mean, it's really interesting the spread in performance numbers between the base. EV9 and this GT line. Yeah, it is It is very interesting, but there's also a huge like delta in price. So um, we, we've got it like from 55,000. This one here is almost $80,000. Uh, I have the regen on max right now. And actually, I, I kind of like it. It actually does a pretty good job. And Kia says it'll bring you down to a full stop when you have it in the iPedal mode. Let's go in our turn here and I'll... Ooh. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sophia getting spicy in the three-row. <laughs> hey, I mean, they said this car was fun to drive because basically what this car is is you took they took a Telluride and they EV6 ified it, right? Because it looks kind of just like the EV6 and the Telluride had a baby. And this thing definitely has that plantedness that you get from an EV. And even just like, you know, going at speed and then putting your foot down, it actually still accelerates uh, pretty impressively. I also like the sound that it makes. What do you think, Tommy? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what that is. Is that like <laughs> customizable? Can you change the sound at all? So you can't change the way it sounds in terms of like the tone of it, but you can just increase the, I guess, the volume of the sound or turn it off completely. I very much like it because it kind of just amplifies what you expect from a traditional or from an electric vehicle. It just kind of makes that noise more pre uh, present which I think it just, it sounds really good. This thing drives really nice. It also has a really good ride quality. Do you do you notice that as well, Tommy? It rides like it's heavy. Yes. Um, <laughs> which is a great thing. I mean, it really irons out imperfections in the road, but then we're looking at a vehicle that's 5,800 pounds. <laughs> so it rides like it's heavy because it is heavy. Um, now, you know, like, when you're kind of tossing it around these Napa Valley turns, there's quite a bit of body roll and it gets a little bouncy over mm -hmm. some of the smaller bumps, but in normal everyday driving, it's incredibly compliant. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily floaty, but right. it does a good job of soaking up the bumps. Yeah, consider, or also consider the fact that we're on 21 inch wheels. It's like a 285 by 45 width tire. So these are pretty fat wheels. Uh, I think Kia did a pretty good job with the ride quality. Unfortunately, we won't be able to drive the other models that have like a 19 or a 20 inch 
inch wheel. I would love to try that out just to see if the ride quality is any different, but uh, you think I should go left or right here? Let's right? go left here. Let's go left here, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's give it a go. Um, now, the other thing I will say, Sofian, is that it's a really quiet cabin. Yes. So they've done a really nice job of kind of insulating the EV9 from the outside world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they made comparisons to Range Rovers when it came to, to sound levels yeah. in here. All right, I want to try. We found a straight road here. Let's see if we can get a better time here. All right, I won't brake torque it this time. We'll just floor it. Felt a little slower there, actually, without brake torquing it. All right. And 60. 4.85. And that's with it definitely more level. So that's pretty much right on target with what Kia claims at five seconds without the rollout. And what do you think of that time, Tom? You think that's fast enough? Uh, yeah, it's plenty. It's I, plenty. I mean, honestly, <laughs> the, the eight second one is probably quick enough as well. But yeah, this is, a, this is a, a quick car. Now, it doesn't feel as maybe violent as like some of the higher end EVs like a Model X, like mm -hmm. a Rivian, um, but it, it's plenty of acceleration for what you need it to do. Yeah, and also keep in mind that the GT Line version has extra torque versus if you guys go for a land or a wind, that has like 443. You can get a boost feature that you can buy through a software over the air update. We don't know the price of it yet, that'll increase the torque to this. But without that boost function, Kia says the zero to 60 time is like around 5.7 seconds. So it, it could be worth it, especially if you guys uh, like to go fast. But uh, in terms of just everyday driving, I'm just gonna switch the drive mode here into its normal setting. Um, I don't really notice a change in the suspension because I don't think this car has adaptive dampers, correct? I no. think you're right. Although you can get it with uh, load leveling rear suspension, yes, which I, is cool. Yeah, that's actually great considering like if you do plan to tow or carry like a lot of people in the car, because I always hate it when I see that, you know, these cars do that Carolina squat where the rear end is all like squatted down from the extra weight. Definitely. <laughs> but uh, but no, I mean, I think that the, the ride quality is good. It's quiet in here, like you said. I also kind of really like the seats in this car as well. The seats, they feel really plush, really comfortable. I'm also sitting here getting a massage. Unfortunately, Tommy, you don't have a massage function. And look oh at that, my gosh. a Fisker Ocean. Someone bought one. <laughs> Someone bought one, but we are here in California which is probably where you're gonna find all the latest and coolest and newest EVs and such. Oh. But why would you buy this? <laughs> <laughs> you buy it because there's too many Teslas on the road in California and everywhere, and you want something that's different, which is kind of like this car, because I think this car looks fantastic, uh, especially in this deep ocean blue. People really love the Telluride. Kia basically kind of, you know, used that styling to kind of design this car. Although I will say that uh, if you guys are looking for another three row, you know, electric vehicle there's also the id buzz which i haven't driven yet but i know you guys did a very detailed video on one yeah and i think you'd probably go with the buzz i you know so i like the buzz um i've only driven the short wheelbase european version mm. i'm kind of worried about the price point yes on the buzz i think it's going to be real pricey right um and I do like the design, but I kind of like that the SUV profile and the 7.8 inches of ground clearance and, and, you know, this feels like a more traditional choice in some ways. But look, the reason I would purchase this vehicle over just about any of the three row on the market is just the design. It's so yes. cool. It, it's such a good use of space on the interior. As you talked about, like the third row's a little small, but it's something new and fresh that we haven't really seen in the EV space. That you hit the nail right on the, on the head there. The um, it's new and fresh. It's also at a more affordable price point versus a lot of the the, the luxury competitors, which are over eighty thousand or over a hundred thousand dollars. And the range on this car is decent. I mean, we started out with a full charge. When I had it in eco mode, it was showing two hundred and seventy-seven miles at I'm sorry at ninety percent or ninety-eight percent charge. So this car, in theory, I, I think Edmonds tested one uh, a couple months ago. They got three hundred and six in California testing conditions and weather conditions. So I'll be I'll have to wait until I get one back home to do a more range testing on. I know Tommy, you guys will be probably doing some cold weather testing and off-road testing in your uh, TFL slip, less, slip test when you get one as well. So uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing that. But I mean, right now it's showing 256 miles of range at 93%. I think that number is acceptable. Although I kind of wish it was over 300 miles. What do you think, Tommy? Yeah, and you know, they do have, I think it's called the light long range. Yes. Which is like their, their long distancer. So it's got 304 is the, is the rating on that vehicle. Mm -hmm. But that's the one that's got, you know, two wheel drive only, rear wheel drive. It's got the low horsepower. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you kind of sacrifice a lot to get that range number. And part of it too, Sofian, is that this is just like, it's a large, very kind of squared off vehicle. Absolutely. I mean, what I think 
you know, taking that out of the equation, if basically you're looking for a replacement for your Telluride, you love your Telluride and you want to go fully electric, this is why the EV9 exists. And that's basically what I'm going to call it. It's the electric Telluride for people who want to upgrade and try going fully electric. But is it a luxury car? Because it's a luxury price tag. You know, it is. is. It a luxury car? Um, I would say no, it's not a luxury car, even though the interior is very nice. Um, but I have trouble putting it in the same kind of space with the luxury brands because it's still a Kia at the end of the day. And when, when, you're, when you're buying a luxury brand, the brand name really matters to people. Uh, and Kia is a great brand. They, offer, they have a ton of sales lately. Their residuals are up. People are paying you know, more money for Kias nowadays. But I, I really think that we might see, we're probably going to see a Genesis version of this car. And I think mm. that'll be the one to get if you guys really want to go for the full luxury experience. So after spending the day driving the all new 2024 Kia EV9, I have to say in the electric space, if you guys wanted to get a three row crossover or a three row vehicle, your choices were always very limited. Of course, there's the Tesla Model X, which is the kind of the tried and true choice. There's also the Tesla Model Y, which is really small. The third row is really reserved for people you don't like. And then there's, of course, there's also uh, some entries from Mercedes. There's the EQS SUV, which is optional, but it's a really small third row. There's the EQB, uh, which also offers a third row, but again, it's also very small. And then of course, there's also the Rivian R1S uh, and then the upcoming Volvo EX90. Those to me are probably the most direct competitors for the new Kia EV9. Uh, and after driving this vehicle, I have to say, this car really changes the game because it finally gives you that third row capability that can actually fit average adults the really tall ones with long legs may not fit into the third row. And it also offers a decent amount of interior space. The interior itself also is very well done. Uh, very premium materials, lots of space, lots of great technology. I love how Kia's latest infotainment system finally includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with wireless over-the-air updates. Uh, the second row seat basically is ni as nice as the front seat. However, the third row, uh, while it is comfortable, I probably would skip the power folding option or the power reclining option, save myself $2,000 and get additional space in the third row. That would just be me personally, if you guys really like that feature. Kia, again, obviously offers that for those of you who like it. In terms of acceleration, obviously I only got to drive the GT line today, but zero to 60 in uh, under five seconds is going to be very quick. I, I imagine though, if you guys load this up with people and stuff or you start towing with it, you're probably gonna start to notice the additional weight slowing the vehicle down. I haven't had a chance to drive the base light versions with the 201 horsepower, 215. I suspect that's probably gonna feel a little bit taxed. So for me personally, I would at least go for the wind trim with all-wheel drive and if you guys are looking to purchase this vehicle they are already at kia dealerships now the company says that eventually later this year they will be building this car in georgia at their plant in georgia right now however they are built in korea which means it's not going to qualify for the full 7500 dollars tax credit if you guys buy this car but they're saying by late summer this year it will be built in georgia and it should start to qualify for that tax credit if you guys wait for the for kia to move production in terms of the base price this car starts at around fifty four thousand nine hundred dollars for the base light with rear wheel drive that's around the same price as a fully loaded version of a kia a Telluride. So it's kind of interesting how Kia put the pricing uh, there. If you guys want the long range version, that's the one that'll do 304 miles of range. That's going to cost you around $4,500 extra. So just around $60,000 for that model. That's still only rear wheel drive. If you guys want all wheel drive, the wind only comes with all wheel drive. That's the cheapest way to get all wheel drive. That starts at around 64 grand. So it's about 10,000 more than the base version of the EV9. And I think that one might end, end up being the sweet spot. The land trim is basically like the wind, but it adds bigger wheels, like a premium package. That's going to cost you around 70 grand. And this model here, however, is getting pricey because the GT line, while it does include a lot of you know bells and whistles and more aggressive styling and more power, uh, this car starts at around 73 grand with the upcharge for those power reclining seats, the destination charge, and the upcharge for the paint. We're looking at just under $79,000. I know 79 grand for a Kia definitely sounds like a lot of money, but if you guys are comparing it to the Rivian and the Mercedes, those are going to cost you around 80,000 to $100,000. The Model X is around $80,000 as well, which is kind of where this car is fully loaded. So. In reality, if you guys are looking at this vehicle, you could also look at one of the more luxury options and not really spend that much more. So the decision's really up to you. Me personally, I think the sweet spot may end up being like the land or the wind trim. For those of you who want to spend in the mid $60,000 range, I think this is definitely worth a look. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Kia EV9 in this GT line trim. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.